Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to do another collection script. But this time, what's going to happen is whenever a player collects this item by walking over it, it's still going to stay there so that other players can collect it as well. Let's go ahead and take a look. So as I move my player over the part here, he's going to collect the part. And then you can see that it stays there for other players to collect as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so all we have to do for this project is just insert a part into the game, which you can do by clicking on the blue cube. After that, you can resize it, change the color, and do whatever else you want to it. Then over in the Explore menu, the first thing we want to do is click on the part. And then if it has a weld inside of it, go ahead and delete that. Next, inside the part, we're going to be adding a script. So you can click on the plus sign, and then click on Script. The first thing we're going to do inside of our script is say local part is equal to script.parent. And all this is doing is just creating a variable as a reference for this part. Next, we're going to define another variable. So we'll say local can get. And we're going to set it equal to true. After that, we're going to create a function for our touch event. So we'll say local function. And we'll name our function pickup. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part. And this is a parameter that gets passed through the touch event. So whenever the part gets touched, it's going to store whatever other part touches it inside of this variable here. So inside the function, what we want to do is say local part parent. And this is going to be equal to other part dot parent. So what we're doing is we're taking whatever other part touches our part right here. So if a player touches this part, likely it's going to be like a leg or a foot or something like that. And by saying other part dot parent, we're taking that leg or the foot and seeing who it belongs to. After that, we're going to say local humanoid is going to be equal to part parent. So this will be the player's model. And then we're going to see if that player model has a humanoid part by saying find first child, which is a, inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. And the main purpose of this line is just to make sure a player is touching the part. After that, we're going to say if humanoid. So if a player is touching the part and can get. So if can get is true, then what we're going to do is we're going to say can get is equal to false. So this is how we prevent that touch event from triggering over and over again. What we're going to do next is we're going to say local new tool. And it's going to be equal to instance dot new. And inside of the parentheses, we're going to be creating a tool. Next, we're going to say local handle is going to be equal to part colon clone. So this creates a copy of the part. Next, what we're going to do is say handle dot name. And this is going to be equal to handle with a capital H. Then we're going to say handle dot parent. And we're going to set this equal to new tool. So basically, we're putting that handle part inside of the tool. Next, we're going to say handle dot script colon destroy. So the reason we're doing this is whenever the player has the tool in their hand, we don't want it to keep triggering that touch event, so we're going to destroy the script. It's not going to mess up the script for the original part. It's just going to destroy the script for the copied part. Okay, after we do that, we're going to say new tool dot parent and we're going to set this equal to part parent then we're going to wait three seconds or whatever time you want for your cooldown and then we're going to say can get is equal to true finally at the bottom we're going to say part dot touched colon connect and then inside of the parentheses will be the name of the function we want to run whenever the part gets touched and that name is pickup Okay, so quickly just to go through what we're doing here. If we notice that a player touches this part right here, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new tool. We're also going to create a new part by taking this part and making a copy of it. Then we're going to rename that part to handle. We're going to put that new handle part inside of the tool. We're going to destroy the script on the copied part. And then we're going to take that whole tool with the handle inside of it and put it inside of the player model. After three seconds, we're going to reset that so the player can pick it up again. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. 
Okay, and now in the game, we'll just double check to make sure the player can pick up the part, and the part also stays on the ground. And after three seconds, if the player goes over the part again, then he picks up another tool part. Okay, let's say you only want the player to be able to hold one item at a time. I'm going to go ahead and show you what you can do to add that to your script. The first thing we're going to do is check to see if they have the tool in their hand. And we can do that by making a new variable and then looking in the player's model to see if they have a tool. We also want to check to see if it's in the player's backpack, which will happen if the player unequips the tool. We can do that by first finding the player by using partparent.name. And then we're going to check for that player in their backpack to see if they have a tool. Adding those to the if statements, we're going to say if humanoid, so if that player has a humanoid part, and can get is true. And what we're adding is not in hand or in backpack. So if it's not able to find it in the hand or in the backpack of the player, then it's going to go ahead and give them that part. Otherwise, it won't let them pick up another one. And one more thing that I added was a name for the tool so that it shows up in the bottom square. Let's go and take a look with these new changes and see what it does. Okay, so my player can still pick up the part, but now if I try to go back over it, it doesn't let me because it has the tool in the hand. And if I unequip the tool and I try to go back over it, it still won't let me because now it's in the player's backpack. So if you look under the Explore menu and under the player's backpack, you can see they have the tool there. If I equip the tool, then it shows up under the workspace for the player model, and it shows up right here. And it won't let me collect another one because I either have it here or in the player's backpack. Alright, so this is going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.